Now, on to today's market movers with easy to follow futures and options trades from CME Group. Welcome to Market Movers, I'm Jim Urio and we are in the heart of another earnings season. Now I've already heard from Netflix and Google and soon we're going to hear from Amazon and Apple. We're looking at using NASDAQ options to either hedge risk or create exposure to these events. Joining me is Chief Investment Officer of King's U Asset Management, Scott Martin. Hi Jim. Okay, this is a big deal to me because mm -hmm. we've said these fangs have been doing the huge amount of the heavy lifting. Everybody's in agreement on that. I Netflix am. was just so-so, Google was a blowout. Is, are we going to see the same thing that happened last quarter where when stocks beat, they're going to get hit? What are we primed for? I think we're primed for good numbers. Now, your point is a good one. What does the market do with some of these good numbers? To my expectation, it depends on how good these numbers really are because the market has already baked in growth. We've already baked in massive profit growth. But to me, it's like in Google's case, for example, some of those intricacies like per, cost per click and things like that, acquisition costs, not to get too far in the weeds, were things that the market really liked to see beyond some of the headline numbers. Is is the grouping of those six names where we talk about as the fangs plus is that the biggest economic thing right now or is the data that's coming out the trade wars rivaling it at the moment I think it's it's the biggest thing going right now because Jim all those companies put together factor into so much part of the economic data no anyway when you got Amazon that's now retail right. and tech you had Google that's tech also advertising there's a lot of things going on right. inside those companies that make up the bigger whole okay now before we dive into the trade discussion I'd like to point out with all market movers it's important to view these as examples that allow you to see different ways to use futures and options products to either manage risk or create additional opportunities, not as recommendation or advice. Price and movements will vary. Uh, the SEP NASDAQ is the underlying here. It was trading at 7480 last we looked, Scott. Yeah, we did. And Jim, the, the NASI has been really interesting lately. I mean, anytime you, you look at a chart and you see something that continues to kind of stair step its way up, hit all time new yes. highs, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, okay, what's the chart telling me? Because we're in this uncharted territory as it is. But specifically, Jim, today, I did think I found some expression that I, I felt pretty comfortable with talking about here, which is the week one August NQ 7500-7550 call spread. It'll cost you about 23 ticks to punt. expires August 3rd, so it takes us through a lot of the good FANG earnings. The underlying is 7480, as you mentioned, so it risks 460 to make a potential 540. Now, that's a pretty even money kind of split there, but that's because I believe there's a lot of momentum built in the NASDAQ here with some of these earnings coming out and delivering. That's likely to push the index. Are you higher, surprised in my that vol volatility is as low as it is and options have become as cheap as they are? Uh, I am, especially considering the fact that a lot of these trades, in my opinion, have gotten off sides, right? right? So to me, there's a little bit of risk there when it comes to the fact that something could go the other way, like Netflix, which is a right. big downdraft, but I'd still believe that the upward swing is in place. Okay, so I'm looking at this opposite. I am not bearish. I actually think earnings will be good. However, I think there is risks to the downside. I have in my medium portfolio, medium term, Google, Apple, and Amazon. I'm long all three of those names. So if all of a sudden we adopt the same sort of procedures we did last time, where good earnings beats mean a downdraft, or heaven forbid, average or not earnings beats, I think we, we are primed for perhaps a pullback in the NASDAQ. If I lose this money, that's fine with me, but I'm looking <laughs> at buying the week one August, same expiration as yours, August 3rd, the 7350, 7300 put spread for eight and a half ticks. Uh, it, it risks 170 to make a potential 830. Now that, to me, that's hedging myself against a move that could be as much as 2.5% lower in the NASDAQ, which is that 7,300, that bottom strike. Again, it's the risk reward. It's a small layout to make a, it's a, know, great a risk bigger reward. ratio, and I'm doing that to hedge my, my I'm risk. I'm kind of jealous. Okay. Uh, so let me change my mind. Uh, <laughs> no. It's a great risk reward for protection, in my opinion, because, and here's the thing I like about what you did there. You can still like those particular names that you mentioned, but still have somewhat of a hedge on the overall index. Yeah. Because if you get the names right, you can still have a benefit of that, but the overall index could still maybe struggle here, at which point you might be in a good shape. Okay, last question going off the board a tiny bit. Donald Trump put some pressure on the Fed through tweets through comments. Does that have any effect on what the Fed's thinking right now? Donald Trump is using Twitter? you got to be kidding Can't me. No, that. it doesn't, but it does put into question what the Fed is going to do going forward if things start to slow down because now they have the president watching them really closely. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio, where we're hoping to make you a better trader.
out businessfirstam.com to find out where to see our entire show. And don't forget to like, follow, and share Business First AM.